Hello everyone, welcome to another Apple Tree, and today we're going to be doing some more related rates. This is my second installment of related rates. I did one with a cylinder and a triangle, but I thought related rates are just one of those things where it's better for more examples, so I'm back and I'm going to be doing a cone, a sphere, and a circle today. Volumes and areas. Um, let's go ahead and just jump right in. This first example. Okay. So sand leaks out of a hole in its container and forms a pile in the shape of a right circular cone whose height is always the same as the radius. The height of the cone is increasing at a rate of 6 inches per minute. So they just gave us DR, uh, no not DR, DH, sorry. DH, DT, 6. Right. Um, what is the expression for the rate of change in the volume in terms of h? Find the rate of change of the cone when h equals 10. Okay, so height and radius are always the same. Let's go ahead and just draw ourselves a picture first. Of a cone, just to help us visualize what's going on here. This is our cone, here's the uh, radius, our given height, and then, you know, just draw the line down the middle, is the height. This is really bad drawing, but you get the idea, right? Okay, so, how do you know if you do area or volume, or surface area, or, you know, how do you know which function to use in these questions? Because it's usually the hard part. But generally, you just have to be very careful in reading the question. We're given, we have to find the rate of change of volume. So, volume of a cone. And if you don't know this equation and you see it on a test, you're basically screwed. Um, but for a cone, just think of it like this. A cone is just a bunch of circles getting smaller and smaller as height increases. Um, so just think of it as pi r squared, which is just the area of a circle and then times h over 3. That's the volume of a cone. Okay, but we want the VDT in terms of h. So let's not even take the derivative just yet. Let's just sub in h for r. Now, what is h in terms of r? Um, height is always the same as the radius. So we know h is always equal to r. So we can just sub this in. We're going to get pi over 3 h cubed. Alright, um, now we'll take the derivative dv dt. We'll get, so uh, power rule 3 times 1 third is just 1. So we're going to get pi h squared times dh dt. Now, if you're um, just confused as why you need to do dh dt, because when you do regular derivatives, right, you're doing, you know, like y equals uh, 1 over, oh, let's do just x squared, right? And then, you know, the derivative is 2x, and you don't have to do a dx dt over here, you know, like, when you're doing normal derivatives. And so you're probably, if you're confused about related rates, it's probably one of the things that's bothering you. Why do you have to throw in a dh dt here and dv dt here? Well, the reason is your function is volume as a function of height. Nowhere in this equation is time. Time does not exist in this equation. But then you're bringing in time because it's a, it's a rate. It's changing with time. Both of them change with time. And so you have to, have in, you have to put in that dv dt as a way of incorporating time into the equation. Because before, this does not have time incorporated in it. This one does, though. That's just an important aside, and hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, and so this is dvdt in terms of h, um, but we have a dhdt that we want to get rid of, and so we can just sub in this over here. And so we're going to get 6, yeah, we're going to get dvdt equals 6 pi, h squared 
And so that is the answer for part A. We have the expression for the rate of change of volume in terms of H. Now part B, what is the rate of change of the cone when H equals 10? Well, this is as easy as just plugging in 10. Because we have the general formula for the change in volume. Um, you can only do this this type of thing like when when the rate of change is constant, uh, because the cone the height of the cone is constantly increasing at at uh, six inches per minute. It's consistent. It doesn't change. That rate doesn't change. In a lot of related rates problems, you're only given the rate of change at a particular moment in time. In, in that case, you can't do what I'm doing. You can't have like a general formula. In this situation, we can. And so I just wanted to show you guys a general formula and non-general formulas. So we just plug in 10. Uh, 10 squared, that's 100 times 6, 600 pi. So that's the rate at which the volume is changing with respect to time. That's going to be in inches per minute, by the way. OK, next question. A spherical snowball is melting. The radius is decreasing at a rate of 2 meters per minute. Okay, so they're giving us a rate, the RDT, and we have to be careful here because it's decreasing at a rate of 2 meters per minute, so we know it's going to be negative 2. Um, what is the, what, at what rate is the volume changing when the radius is 3 meters? So we need to find dv dt, r equals 3. Okay, well that's simple enough. Since it's volume, we're going to set up a volume equation. What's the volume of a sphere? I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture. Help you visualize. To be fair, my pictures probably don't help you visualize anything. But let's just go ahead and write our volume formula. Volume for a sphere, it's going to be 4 thirds i r r cubed. These are really important to, uh, to memorize, especially if your professor isn't giving you these formulas on the exam. Maybe if you're, yeah, if you're expected to just know them, you're going to have to memorize them. It's not a fun process, but you got to do what you got to do. Okay, now we, so we have volume, but we want the rate of volume. We want the rate at which volume is changing. And so I actually, uh, there's a bit of a typo in the question. I should have rate in there somewhere, but it's okay. It's no big deal. And dv dt is equal to 4 pi r squared. And then since we're throwing in, since we're adding in the element of time to this equation, we have to throw in dr dt. So 4 pi r squared times dr dt. Um, and so now we can plug in what we know. So do we know dr dt? Yes, we do negative 2. Do we know r squared? Yes, it's going to be 3. Or r is 3, and we're going to square that. So dv dt is just going to be equal to 4 times 9 times negative 2. This negative 72 pi. That one is pretty easy. Hopefully you understand it. We can go over it again if we need some more help. It's a pretty simple process though if we just look at it carefully and slowly. You just need to find the volume. The question asks, specifically asks volume. So you do volume here. Take the derivative and then plug in what you know. Last one. Tree trunk has a circular cross section. Radius RT. The cross section grows at a rate dr dt. 2t, oh, I'm, I'm going to rewrite the rate here because it's uh, it's ugly. I doubt it, it looks weird. That's 2 times square root t. But it's to the 1 third, so it's going to be a cube root, actually. For 0 to 10 years. Find the rate at which the cross-sectional area is changing. Um, so we need to find da dt. da dt. I'm eight and R oops and R ten. 
Okay. So it looks like we have three knowns here. So we should be able to solve this question. So what's the area? So we're not dealing with volume. This is the first time that we're actually dealing with area. Area, cross-sectional area. Um, and so it's a circle. So area of the circle is just A equals R squared. Um, we'll take the derivative of that, dA dt. 2 pi r times dr dt. And so instead of writing dr dt, what we notice is that this is dr dt over here. We're given dr dt. So we're just going to multiply. Instead of by dr dt, we're just going to plug in this formula here, which we were given in the question. Um, and that's pretty much it. At this point, we have a time and a radius to, to sub in. So 2 pi, the radius at this instant is 10, times 2 cube root of 8. And this will work out to uh, cube root of 8 is 2, times 2, 4, times 2, 8, times 10, 80. And then we have that pi. 80 pi. That's going to be centimeters squared per year. Okay, that's going to wrap up this video, guys. I hope you learned a lot. Good luck on all your exams, and I'll see you next time.